nerds, I'm Julianne Fader, the Gastro Nerd, and I have a super simple, super cheap recipe for you. Pink beans, literally they're just called pink beans, so boys, it's fine, they're pink, you can get over it. In Spanish, it's arbichuelas rosadas, and mice, corn, sweet corn, in a can. Huh, look at that. What's great about canned things is they're fresh all year round, and you can keep them in your pantry, so they're a great go-to whenever you need a snack or meal in a pinch. And on average, they cost about less than, I don't know, like we're talking cents here. So maybe this can, I bought a bunch. I bought six of these for $2. But to give this a little fresh flavor, I'm going to add a beautiful spring onion. You could use a regular, a red onion, shallot, you name it. It'll add a nice little sweetness on top of the corn. And then we're going to make this a little picante with some cayenne pepper. It's just red pepper. You might see it in stores. It's ground already. Just adds a nice little light spice to it or heavy if you go heavy. Since this is semi-Mexican themed, I'm going to use cumin. Cumin is a great spice and it has a wonderful kind of earthy flavor to it. It is very distinct. So use as little or as much as you like. You will notice it. Cheating for a little garlic and onion. I'm going to use some granulated onion and some garlic powder. I know because it's gonna give a little bit of that extra garlic flavor without actually putting garlic, because I'm feeling lazy and I don't want to cut up garlic, and I don't really want to eat garlic with this. And then of course, salt. Remember, things in cans often have a lot of salt in them, so definitely taste test before you add salt, and make sure, because you don't want to over salt your food. Also, note you can add mushrooms, any sort of fresh vegetable to this, it works really well. I've added mushrooms in the past, you can put kale, cabbage, you name it. I'm just gonna go with a plain onion. The only real work involved here is I'm going to cut up this onion. And I'm, because it's a spring onion, which basically means the very first onions of the season, it's nice and small, super sweet. And I can also use all this beautiful top part. But do note when you're using anything like a spring onion, scallions, the top part here will cook more quickly than the bottom root part. So I would advise, generally, just about when it starts to turn more of a deeper green, that's your cutoff point saute that first and then add the top part a little bit afterwards. I have a pot on the stove with a real low heat because we're going to sweat these first. And then this top part I'm going to add just a little bit later. So it's a little olive oil. First part I'm adding the whites and the lighter green parts. The idea is for them to really sweat out, so say a nice neutral with no color, no brown on them. I'm going to add the green. My mother always taught me, as she was taught by her mother, and neither of them cooked, that if you, as long as you have sautéing onions or garlic in the house going, people think you can cook and you have this wonderful kind of homemaker smell. So if you really want to not cook, but at least for, make it smell like you do, um, you can always throw in some garlic and onions. Don't burn them though, because then the whole gig is up. I love that beautiful green color that you can only get with spring onions. And scallions, um, often called spring onions, not necessarily true spring onions, are usually a little bit smaller, have a slightly different flavor, but also cousins. Um, you can totally use them as well. And they have that great, uh, that great color effect smaller white part and then the bigger green. So it has wonderful, wonderful color and of course flavor. So now in with the beans and the corn. One can of each. Put it all in together. See, and it has that nice little green in there. So these are our, the, the beans and the corn are already cooked. So we're really just warming them up and letting the flavors come to, of the onion come together. So here we go dash of my cayenne. This is my spicy. So of course, make this as spicy as you want. More cayenne, more spicy. My cumin, like I said, it has a very warm, earthy flavor. Oh wow, yeah. It also kind of smells like B.O. sometimes, just to note. But it's delicious. So just a little dash. Obviously, if you're a first timer, smell it, try it. Go light first, and then you can always add more. Just a little, and these are just like literally a dash garlic powder. Remember, there's no garlic in here, so I can go a little heavier. And then a little extra onion powder, just because, yeah, I just like that smell a little. It works. You know, of course, you can 
definitely do without the onion and garlic powder if you don't have them. I just like it, it adds another little la layer of flavor. Before I add my salt, because as I mentioned, there's usually a lot of salt in canned things, I'm going to taste it. Yeah, for me, that's enough salt. I tend to like things a little undersalted. So I'm not gonna add anything. And in fact, you know what? A little mas picante and a little more cumin. Like I said, this is totally to your preference. And now I'm just gonna make sure that really just comes up together just so it gets hot throughout, right? That's essentially done. You'll see, you can always just taste, but you'll see it'll start to boil just a little. This was about mm, maybe two minutes in the pot once I added the beans and the corn. Mm. You know, even in New York, it kind of feels like you're in Mexico. That little addition of cumin and cayenne really makes this and brings out all those amazing flavors. You have all the sweetness from the corn and the onions, the meatiness of the beans, and all those great spices working together. This is a great dish if you're a vegan or a vegetarian on its own. And of course, you can use this to jazz up burritos or tacos, sandwiches, salads. You can, you can let this get nice and cool and you can throw it on top of a salad. So it's super versatile. Here's one of my great favorite cheap eats in a pinch. I'm Julianne Fader, the Gastro Nerd. If you haven't subscribed, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel just by clicking on this little button somewhere around here. And stay tuned for more delicious nerdiness to come.